Lamborghinis are just really skitterish, and uh, uh, it's just a lot more a more handful of a car to drive. I, I was I wouldn't say I was scared of it, but um, boy, it was a lot of car. Or, this one's a lot of car. Uh, this switch here mm -hmm. is called the Manatino, and what it does is you switch it back and forth for rain driving, yeah, snow driving, or okay. you yeah. can and switch it to fun. ESC, which turns off the electronic stability control, and which you do not want to do unless you're. Professional race driver. Mm, unless you're drifting or something. Uh, um, well, you wouldn't. I don't think you'd want to use this to drift in. But um, okay, south to Salem. Okay. So you never have trouble merging, I take it. Uh, no, not too much. It, oh, it's it's really powerful. I got it. It's an automatic, right? Uh, it's a, um, a dual clutch automatic. Oh, okay. So I can turn off. So you can drop it down in a gear if you Yeah, want. And I, I can, uh, I can, uh, paddle shift by myself. This, uh, where is it here? This shift here. Okay. If I push that button, uh, it turns into manual shifting. And then at one point, if you don't shift it, it'll just shift itself okay. uh, to protect the engine and transmission. How many hours do you drive? Have you driven this? Well, I've got, I think I got 3,300 miles on it. And unfortunately, you know, with this problem with my back and COVID, um, you go somewhere with COVID. You, I mean, once you got there, what the hell do you want to do? You yeah, know? that's true. And with my back, if I drove somewhere with COVID, once I got there, I couldn't do anything. Or even without COVID, it's not like I could walk around, you know. And I, so I, I kind of, I mean, I had enough drives uh, just to have fun to drive. And so, um, yeah, it was getting, it's getting a little boring sitting around the house. <laughs> yeah. So this, I mean, it, this is the kind of car you drive for enjoyment, not for community or anything else. So. Not for what? Not for commuting, would you just... Um, you could commute in this car. It's just, it's a big, heavy, wide car, mm -hmm. and it sucks a lot of gas. And, um, and take, it takes premium to it, so... Absolutely, yeah. Um, but I would, yeah, I mean, I would hate to use this car as a daily driver just because it's it's so wide and big, mm -hmm. and pulling into parking spaces would, would you know, present challenges at times. What does the uh, the GTC4 Luso mean? Well, GTC means Grand Touring. Um, what's the C stand for? Uh, Grand Touring Coupe. And okay. Luso is the Italian word for luxury. Okay. I mean, the seats. The, I mean, everything is is definitely nice. Like the, the dashboard's leather. Everything is looks like it's like really nice. It feels nice. It's nice to be in here. Yeah, and it really is. It's um, just, you know, just kind of soaking it all in, you know what I mean? Now, I have a, I have a Rogue Sport, and it has a four-cylinder, and it's noisier than this car inside. Way oh, is that right? Yeah. There are spots now on 26 uh, West and East going down to Hillsboro where they've completely repaved it, and the noise reduced is reduced to, like, zero. So I imagine driving this on that... Well, be this, like flying. Um, you get this on concrete, it's really noisy, road noise, or uh, tire noise. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but on, like on this asphalt, it's it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. This has, uh, once again, 12 cylinders, 690 horsepower. Oh my god. Uh, four wheel, uh, four wheel um, steering and four wheel drive. Really? Yeah, the rear wheels turn two degrees opposite from the front wheels. Is that and, for stability? Uh, yeah, it, well, it, it's a very long car, and... Um, I see. It helps turn the back end like a fire truck. It sure does. When they have those those guys in the back yeah, of the... Yeah, yeah, they turn opposite. I didn't know that. Yeah. I thought they turned with. No, they uh, their wheels turn the opposite way. Well, think about it. The, if the car is turning this way and you turn the wheels this way, on the trailer, uh -huh. you're, they're just going to scrub. If 
you turn them this way, they all follow. Ah, uh, that makes sense. Just like on a motorcycle, when you go, want to go somewhere, you tap the, the handlebar in the opposite way you're turning, and it just automatically goes right. that way. Well, I guess I've driven uh, I've driven ships before, so yeah, that makes sense. So yeah, this is, um, it's pretty cool when you feel the, the, the four-wheel steering. I mean, it's not like it, you know, it's ultra pronounced, but it is, um, uh, you'll go into a turn and you know, all of a sudden it's like, oh, I didn't need to turn in quite so early because mm -hmm. the car turns further. So is it noticeable when you get in a car without it? Not really. Oh. No, not really, but you notice, uh, you do notice certain movements in this one. I had, I tracked this up at the bridge up in Washington. That was, that was pretty exciting. Um, How fast were you able to get it? Uh, I did 155 on the straightaway, but I, I ran out of guts. I just kept yeah. seeing uh, yeah. the end of the, the, <laughs> the turn coming up and, you know, saw a hundred thousand dollar repair bill. Yeah. And thought, uh, well, maybe I'll, I'll break here. Now, another guy who, uh, who races that track all the time and has a, well, another guy who races that you track. You have to get off of here, I thought. Oh, did it? Yeah. Oh, shoot, I'm talking. And... Well, we can get off at South okay. Pacific Highway. I'm sorry, uh, I should have told you earlier. Yeah, I was, I... Another guy who had, uh, is real experienced on that track, a driver, and mm -hmm. he did 165 in the same, not this car, but a, a GTC Ford Lusa. But it's, uh, yeah, I really like it. I'm a real car guy, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, I've always wanted cars my whole, whole life, and uh, this is kind of I always wanted the 12 cylinder was my big goal, and uh, uh, did you try other 12 cylinders like a Jag or anything else? I haven't, no. But um, I just uh, you know the way they sound, the way they run, the way they feel, and and I like this body style, what they call a uh, shooting brake, uh, uh, a two door two door uh, hatchback style. I hired a uh, trainer for the day I had it up at the track. You know, I race, but I race cars with a hell of a lot less power. Uh -huh. So I thought I'd, I hired a trainer for a half hour in the morning and a half hour in the afternoon. And in the afternoon, he was in the car, and we were coming around a turn, and, and he said, no, more gas, more gas, push further, further, further. Oh, man, <laughs> I tell you what, boy, I was about wet in my pants, but uh, he was right. So it probably could take way more than you were even giving it. Oh, I, oh hell yes. In two miles, oh. take exit 289 um, onto Nybig Street towards I mean, Tuolumne to, Sherwood Road. One, I'm used to uh, uh, Mazda Miatas and that are all race prep, and uh, uh, you know, I'm, I mean, that's 100. We'd do 115, 120 on that. But this, this is a 200 plus mile an hour car. And, oh my gosh. Uh, you just, you need a, a lot of skill to drive a car like this properly. And I don't, I mean, you know, I'd like to stroke myself and tell myself I have that skill, but I don't. Well, you have more experience than most, I would think, driving oh, exotic oh. cars. Well, I have way more experience, uh, yeah, driving cars, way more. But um, uh, a car like this, the, the amount of power in this car is, is stunning. Do you have to? Do you feel like you have to hold back all the time when you're driving? Yeah. Um, I mean, I wouldn't dare put my foot flat to the floor right now. No. Even with traction control, with which this half has, and I've got it set on race or sport. Um, uh, even with traction control, I mean, one, it's it's a really expensive car. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Like really expensive. I, I don't want to fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> Use the right lane to take exit to 89 onto Nybig Street towards Tualatin Sherwood Road. What accent is that? Speaking um, of? that's Australian. Okay. Okay, is this in? Yeah, point two. 289, yeah. Take the exit, then turn right onto Southwest Nybig Street. Yeah, when I got the, uh, the lamp. 
When I bought the Lamborghini, I just had this this fear of being that Lamborghini new owner oh. who, uh, who pulls off the lot immediately, Turn right, floors it, and left. puts it right into a goddamn lamp. That happens you know? more than you think. Oh, it happens a lot. These guys. At the traffic lights, use the middle two lanes to keep left onto Southwest to Wellington Sherwood okay. Road. Uh oh. Oh no no I'm sorry you left yeah you're okay. you're good you're good either one of these two. Um. Keep left. Uh oh yeah a lot of guys get in these cars in they have 4. no 5 clue miles, what the power. Turn left onto Southwest Pacific Highway. I mean they truly have no clue how much power these cars have. You constantly see it on the internet of. You know, the mm -hmm. Lamborghini sign is in the background, and here's a car <laughs> balled up in the in the street. Um, I, yeah, I, 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 I got scared by that Miata, even the Miata with the, the Acura engine in it. But, yeah, this thing, way more power than I should, than I want to uh, deal with. So the, is it the only time you really punched it, the one time on the track? Oh, no, I've had it pretty fast on the freeway. I've had it up over 100. I got a ticket for, I had it 101 out in the central Oregon and um, got a ticket. The guy gave me one for 99, so they didn't take my license. Oh, that was nice of them. Yeah. I, um, I guess. How many points is that? Like all of them? <laughs> Apparently, if they take your license, yeah, you, you, you've sucked up every point you had. So do you get a lot of uh, people asking you about the car when you're parked? Oh yeah, yeah, almost always. Uh, it was funny. This I was coming back from a race one weekend, and <laughs> okay, oh, 4.2 miles, and this guy pulls up to me. He says, well, "That is the most beautiful car I have ever seen. What is it?" <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you get a lot of, and the Lamborghini was even more so. Uh, that was almost scary because you get people following you, in your usually in your blind spot, oh. and videotaping, and, and uh -huh. uh, oh man, it, it got a little wacky. I mean, they'd run, or you'd see them in your rearview mirror, and all of a sudden they'd run right up on your ass, and you'd see them like this, and it's like, holy shit, get away from me, you yeah. know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, there's that compulsion because this is a, as you said, a very, very expensive car. People can't, they just don't have the ability to be in one, so they live through you, I guess. Yeah, yeah, and I don't mind, you know, I don't, I don't mind them doing it. It's just that they get a little dangerous mm -hmm. sometimes in, in what they're doing, you know, particularly when they're, they're running right up on your ass and um, uh, driving with one hand and jacking around. Have you ever gone through a drive through with this? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, McDonald's. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when we were up racing at the uh, at the uh, Ridge up in Washington, yeah, I would go every morning. I went to McDonald's and got a breakfast. Did you get any looks? They didn't know what that was. Uh, well, this should be pretty pretty fun out here today, Rob. I'm this event is being hosted by Haggerty, which is my insurance company. Okay. And um, uh, the the, peop, the dealership supplying the cars is the Tiger dealership with the guy that doesn't like me and I don't like him. So uh, I haven't seen him since before I bought this car. So this this should be I, if he's if he's seen a guest list, I can only assume he's looking and saying, son of a bitch, McMahon is coming here. I can't believe he's going to drive one of my cars. <laughs> So you said you bought this up in Seattle, right? Yeah. Is yeah. that because you couldn't get along with the other guy? Yeah, I didn't. Just fuck him. I'm not going to buy a car from this guy. Uh, I've known him a long time. Uh, we just seemed to not like each other from the very beginning. That happens. And it, and it hasn't. Uh, it hasn't. Re <laughs> it hasn't reduced any. <laughs> so is this? Uh, so it'll be interesting if he's out there, and I'm certain he will be. What is the event exactly? Is it just a, like a show and tell, or? Yeah, you know they're trying to. Uh, Ferrari's trying to sell cars, and mm -hmm. Haggerty is a, a big uh, performance car and collector car insurer. So, uh, you know they do these in conjunction with each other. Okay. So this is a 2020? 
Yeah. Do you think they'll have 22s out there? Uh, no, they discontinued this model. Oh. Um, they Ferrari only runs models three or four Red years. Red camera ahead. Um, they only run a, a model three or four years, and then they change it. Okay. Will they have any 2022 models of anything, do you know? Or oh, yeah, of all their other cars, yeah. Oh, really? Okay. The last, I think the last model for this was 2020. I don't think they had a 2021 model. Do you know what the production runs are on or something like this? I don't. I'd like to know. Uh, this is really low because this is, I mean, it's just not a, one of their more popular styles of cars. Um, in fact, during COVID, uh, every production line was full except the production line for this car. Oh, really? And then um, the, the, the salesman at the dealership called me and said, Tim, this is like, you can't believe it. He says, we got notice yesterday that it was out of production. And we got notice today it's at the port or three days later or mm -hmm. whatever it is. He says, that never happens. And about a week after that, they announced they were closing down the factory for COVID. Oh. So I just figure they, they uh, uh, tried to rush in at one to get the car out as fast as they could. Otherwise, it would have been a few more months, uh, four or five more months to get the car. What are those things on the handles? I don't mean the handles up behind the steering wheel. Oh, those are the, the paddle shifters. That's how I shift. Oh, if you were going to go manual. Yeah. What yeah. is that on the left side? This one? Mm -hmm. Oh, this is uh, downshift. This is upshift. Oh. And these are the blinkers. Oh, so you really every, don't you don't every, have to take your hand off the wheel ever. You, yeah, you picked right up on that. This yeah. car, everything you need to drive this car is on the steering wheel. Wow. Which is a little different than most cars. Mm -hmm. There's nothing, you see, there's nothing on, no stalks out the side. Um, here's the wipers, here's the headlights, uh, flash, you flash the headlights. Um, and the wheels is, the wheel is actually, I think, smaller more compact than a typical wheel, especially yeah. on the bottom. Yeah, yeah, it's a flat bottom. To, uh, some people really don't like flat bottom wheels. Um, I guess I'm ambivalent about them. I mean, I like this one. Well, we're in the right town, Sherwood. Genesis of building a house outside of 
came from or Jewish? Well, I got that? a car collection in downtown in yeah. a building, and I don't I don't trust them anymore. I don't trust having my bringing my cars in and out of the building because people and, know it's there. Well, they would, yeah, and um, it kind of got to the point is okay, I got a choice. I can either dump the car collection and just stay in the condo, um, or I can take the car collection with me and move somewhere. And, and then I started looking, and I thought, why the hell do I want to be in Oregon? I don't like the city, I don't like the county, and I don't like the state anymore. Um, so, uh, off to Washington, where I can save tax dollars. Go past this mm -hmm. line, then at the next one, turn left. At the traffic lights, use the left two lanes to turn onto Southwest Pacific Highway. This is funny, I always have a problem with getting in between these two cars. I want to, when I get into this, I want to push the stalk for the turn signal. So uh -huh. when I get into the Porsche, I do this. <laughs> so are you, how far into Washington are you going? Just across the river. Okay. Um, I'm, I can see the control tower at the Portland airport oh. right across from it. Okay. It's kind of nice. So you're on the elevation there, or? Yeah, I'm up. Well, the the lot starts here, goes here, and goes down. Okay. I'm going to be on the bottom portion of it. In 2.5 miles, turn right onto Southwest Chapman Road. So do you ever get people with cars like that who come up next to you? Oh, these. <laughs> yeah. There's always a car. There's car guys everywhere. Car women too. Car girls. They're all over the place. And that's that nice looking car. You don't see many of them riding around anymore. I mean, he really... He, oh, this one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, must 65, 66. That's pretty, actually. But a lot of, you know, a lot of... It, 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 car car guys, car people are, are real stratified. I mean, there's this guy, you know, he's a hot rodder. There's, mm -hmm. there's uh, European sports cars like this. There's old European sports cars. There's new ones. There's, uh, um, you know, brass cars from the early, early 19th century, early 1900s. Uh, mm. Everybody has their choice. Yours is a kind of a niche choice. Yeah, I got this, but the, the car collection is all custom cars, so, uh, which is, is a, a niche in its own, that's for sure. In two miles, turn right onto Southwest Chapman Road. That, that is a pretty car, though. I had a, when I was in high school, I had friends who had those. Of course, that was only 20 years after they were made, so they were more plentiful, I think. Oh, I remember. I, the first one I ever saw, I remember a black Mustang with a red interior and a six-cylinder engine over at... Uh, over at this Texaco station, a block from where I lived as a kid. Where did you live as a kid? Toledo, Ohio. Oh, oh okay. Oh, God, was that exciting seeing that car. I Although, bet. the car that gave me my, I think, probably gave me my first orgasm was uh, a 63 Chevy Corvette split window coupe. I was, I must have been nine years old and I came around on Monroe Red Street. Red light and speed camera ahead. I came around on Monroe Street and walk over to the city service station, and there is this brand new Corvette Stingray. I mean, it was like the ultimate car back then because uh -huh. it, it, it just was the, the, the design was just such a departure from everything. And to see it in magazines and see drawings and then see my first one, <laughs> I still have a goal is to get a 63 Corvette split window coupe. I'm trying to decide between getting one of those and getting an Austin Healey for just for fun driving. You What's know? an Austin Healey? Oh, it's a little two-seater sports car from the uh, 50s and 60s, and uh, I've just always loved them. And I think it's the only little two-seater European sports car I can fit in. I think I'm not even sure. Have you sat in one? No, oh. no, not for years. Have you ever driven a, the Stingray or the Austin Healey? Uh, I've driven a different model Stingray, and I've driven other cars similar to the Austin Healey. But, um, I mean, that's, you know, that's back when just cars were just 
cars, no mm-hmm. electronics, none of that crap on them. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, just an engine and steering, and that was that. So it's a little, it's a it really a different experience driving a car like that. And then a Corvette is com- considerably different than a uh, Austin Healy. Or this? I mean, you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Corvettes more like a. I mean, American American cars were.
Yeah, red umbrellas. Oh, look at those. Umbrellas. Does your heart pound a little bit when you see that? <laughs> <laughs> it, it has to. I mean, you know what's happening. This will, I, I'll be surprised if we see any more of these here, to tell you the truth. I know one guy in Portland who has one, but other than that, um, I don't. Is this the valet? Uh, apparently. 